Can you give us any idea at all what this breakdown is going to do to the rest of the program? Well, I'm sure that we will reassess the landing sites uh, that have been chosen. We'll reassess the command service module itself. We want to satisfy ourselves that uh, we've done the best we can before we launch again. Uh, I believe that uh, in terms of the landing sites, we, we will probably reconvene and uh, go through our landing site selection again to make sure we're satisfied that that is true. I think we've done that enough now, however, that we can probably come pretty close to, to laying out the sites that we'd like to go to. Would you, would you think that the six-month hiatus between shots that you've laid out for yourself now would be sufficient to get a handle on what was wrong with the service module and correct it? Or do you think that there might be a delay, a stretch out as a result of that? Well, I think that's very difficult to, to answer, Bill. Uh, let me say this. I don't think we would hesitate to wait a longer period of time than six months if we were not satisfied. The uh, dip spurn that has been referred to, would that have to occur behind the moon out of radio contact, or could you fix it so that you could perform it in radio contact? It, it could be in radio contact, uh, possibly. Here. On the uh, backup systems, the way the various backup systems, as far as moving into the limb, and the, uh, the various systems that have backed themselves up to the emergency systems. Are you satisfied with the way they've worked? And is this giving you an insight into things that might be needed in, in, uh, in future flights, even more backup systems uh, that would back up some of these possibly that have now failed? Well, <clears throat> the command and service module was designed to be an independent spacecraft, and we built a redundancy into the spacecraft. This was, whatever happened today was one of those cases that's very difficult to design for. We had uh, something happen, which was a major uh, consequence down in the, that bay, I think, because of the, of the multitude of things that occurred when you lose two fuel cells and an oxygen tank and a, the oxygen runs out of the other and all that. That's something very significant. It'd be very difficult to design against that. We were fortunate that we're on the way to the moon with the LEM on board, or LEM attached. So I wanted to ask about, uh, you say that on the return flight, this could have been extremely critical. Uh, are you thinking now in terms of something to do in the event this should occur on a return flight? I think that would be uh, pretty near uh, impossible to do at this time with that vehicle. If we're here and then we're going to take Mary, then we're going to have to close it up. Does the fact that you went into a hybrid trajectory yesterday, pulling you out of free, free return, is that going to cause you any troubles in trying to get back around the moon? Produce electricity, and we're seeing the light. Close to, to laying out the sites that we'd like to go to. Would you would you think that the six month hiatus between shots that you laid out for yourself now would be sufficient to get a handle on what was wrong with the service module and correct it, or do you think that there might be a delay, a stretch out as a result of that? Well, I think that's very difficult to. To answer, Bill, uh, let me say this. I don't think we would hesitate to wait a longer period of time than six months if we were not satisfied. The uh, dip spurn that has been referred to, would that have to occur behind the moon out of radio contact, or could you fix it so that you could perform it in radio contact? It, it could be in radio contact, uh, possibly. Here. On the... Uh backup systems, the way the various backup systems, as far as moving into the limb and the, uh, the various systems that have backed themselves up to the emergency systems, are you satisfied with the way they've worked? And is this giving you an insight into things that might be needed in, in, uh, in future flights, even more backup systems uh, that would back up some of these possibly that have now failed? Well, <clears throat> the command and service module was designed to be an independent spacecraft, and we built a redundancy into the spacecraft. This was, whatever happened today was one of those cases that's very difficult to design for. We had uh, something happen, which was a major uh, consequence down in the, that bay, I think, because of the, of the multitude of things that occurred when you lose two fuel cells and an oxygen tank and a, the oxygen runs out of the other and all that. That's something very significant. It'd be very difficult to design against that. We are fortunate that we're on the way to the moon with the LEM on board, or LEM attached.
So I wanted to ask about, uh, you say that on the return flight, this could have been extremely critical. Uh, are you thinking now in terms of something to do in the event this should occur on a return flight? I think that would be uh, pretty near uh, impossible to do at this time with that vehicle. One here, and then we're going to take Mary, then we're going to have to close it up. Did the fact that you went into a hybrid trajectory yesterday, pulling you out of free free return, is that going to cause you any troubles in trying to get back around the moon? No, as I said earlier, we're not on a free return right now, but it, it, it would only take a maneuver of about 20 to 40 feet per second to get you back on a free return. That could be done in, say, five or ten hours from now if we chose to do that. Uh, Chris and Jim, uh, do you have any feeling of how the crew feels and also uh, Marilyn and Mary on this situation? Well, I, I would only guess that the crew feels that uh, the situation is under control, but, uh, that they were in a serious condition and they, they uh, knew they had a job to do and I don't think they stopped to consider what their personal feelings were at the moment. Uh, you'll have to wait and see how they felt about it themselves as far as uh, uh, the wives are concerned. I'm sure uh, Deke Slayton has talked to them, but we have not. I, th I think in, when you're in a, a spot like that where you're busy and you have a lot of things to do, uh, I think you just go ahead and do them. And the, the crew's been jumping back and forth between spacecraft and firing systems up and down and, and maneuvering around quite ably in the spacecraft. And they've had the situation well in hand. So I think they've been probably too busy to sit back and certainly they have remained uh, very calm and uh, responsive to uh, the discussions from the ground and uh, I'd say they're they have the situation well under control we're going to continue to schedule these briefings throughout the mission whenever there's a point where we think interpretation would help and uh, we'll be back again but I think we ought to get back to mission control now <laughs> Uh, if you want.